Your tattoos, mad beautiful. Thank like, you. Like, you rock. No, she rock them, though. They call me AJ Bando, a.k.a. Motion Man, Eminem type shit. They call me Eminem type <laughs> Stop playing. I got hella motion, though. That's my name, here, Eminem. Motion who are you Man trying to, who are you trying to bang? Hey, but is you single, by the way? You mad beautiful. I ain't gonna cat. Like, the you stud. got Instagram oh, number? Are you, are you a roller like that? Are you... Why are you so... I'm actually happy that she's happy. Like, I'm happy that she's smiling that he's trying to talk to her. Because sometimes you'd have situations where the studs would get upset. And they would say, hey, why are you being weird? How is he being weird? You got to... I told y'all, stud box is still box. Damn, true. Like, tight <laughs> shit. Nah, I see. I got me a thing for studs. I got me a thing for studs. No, like, no. your tattoos, man, beautiful. Alright, I just said it, and I said it in a previous video that stub box is um still box. In this particular situation, I think I'll let her cross the street. You know, she, she kind of resembles King Yella. I wouldn't be attracted to a stud that looks like King Yella. That wouldn't be my cup of tea. Does size matter in a guy? Yeah, if you're short, I've been... So here, hold this here. We're gonna measure your waist. Huh? Oh my, Jacob. No, 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 no. Forty-two no, no. inches. Fuck, you guys are fucking weird as fuck. You judge guys based on something they can't change. You're weird. Somebody get this man the Nobel Peace Prize because he's out here doing God's work. He don't even have to because he's not vertically challenged like a lot of us. You know what I'm saying? He gotta be at least six feet. This is what happened after my date decided to type in I love cheating on my wife into Google Translate. So I'm very blunt. I really wanted to know what was going on. So I literally just got his phone and showed him his lock screen, which was literally him and his wife on their wedding day. And he just chuckled, just chuckled. And then he typed into Google Translate, come home with me. Now I know this was a stupid decision, but I was too curious. I was too curious, like I had to know what was going on. So I went home with this dude, got to his house. He was whoa, 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 giving whoa, me- Whoa, 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 hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How it went from you exposing him for cheating on his wife to you going home with him? What does that actually say about you? If a person is cheating, they wrong. But if you knowingly have an affair or have a hookup with somebody that you know is in a relationship, you're just as bad. He drinks, but I was just sipping them, whereas he was throwing them back. And before long, he was literally asleep on the sofa. Asleep on the sofa. It gets weirder. I hear the front door opening, right? I have never been in such a state of fight or flight in my life. And guess who opens the door? His wife. His wife. I was literally get smacked around the face to be honest but she just walks in and starts talking to me in perfect english like this is a perfectly normal scenario i can already see where this is going <laughs> i can already see where this is going this sounds like a scene so i'm completely taken aback she takes me into the kitchen pours a drink just talking to me like, oh, how are you? What, what are you doing? Like, having a good time. I was just like, is this, what is going on? He was still asleep on the sofa throughout this whole thing. I nice. bet. Me and his wife were getting on really well. Let's just say one thing led to another. Um, and what was meant to happen that evening didn't happen, but something else definitely did. <laughs> this is what happened. <laughs> the scissors came out of the toolbox. So, he obviously goes out there and recruits women for his wife. No. It's not good to insinuate, but come on. Let's, this is too juicy. What I think happened, he went out there, recruited something. So him and his wife can have a threesome. He was trying to get drunk enough so he wouldn't get too excited and was able to perform. He drank too much and fell asleep. What y'all think about that? I think that's what happened. Now, I don't know about y'all. If you ain't never came home drunk off the hen and took your woman to the promised land, I don't know what to tell you. I know it's about 25,000 of you guys that watch these videos that still haven't subscribed. Hit that subscribe button. Oh, now we almost at 100K, man. We almost at 100K. And follow me on the gram. Follow me on Instagram. This code section 2903.1181 and or endangering children in violation of a Harvey Vice Code Section 2919.22B2. 
Count four alleges that on or about June 3rd, 2024, did knowingly cause serious physical harm to J.W. on 10, date of birth 10-29-2020. Count five alleges that... Alright, so my co-worker was telling me about this. When I read about this story, it made me sick. Well, after seeing this video, I was disgusted. As a father, I can't imagine somebody hurting my son in front of my face and living to talk about it, let alone smiling in front of me while they're reading the charges. I'm sorry, but I'm crashing out in that situation. On or about June 3rd, 2024, the defendant did torture or cruelly abuse JW, date of birth 10-29-2020, a child under 18 years of age, and furthermore, the violation resulted is serious physical harm to JW, date of birth 10-29-2020. Count 6 alleges that on or about... I don't care about all them word gymnastics. All I know is that she hurt an innocent child and she deserved to pay. Some of y'all might be big on the judicial system. Let her have her day in court, innocent until proven guilty, this, that, and the third. I'm not even going to come at the parents because they're mourning right now. But I just can't imagine watching somebody hurt my child. When I see things getting out of control, I'll take my son and leave. If I'm at a basketball court and dudes get to arguing and I don't know how far it's going to go, I take my son and leave. The worst thing that could happen is my son getting hurt by a stray or me getting hurt by a stray. But at the end of the day, man, your goal is to protect your kids. That's the sound of the object. Ready? <laughs> Make this sound. <laughs> yeah, no, that's ready? funny. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Ready? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Not doing. <laughs> My boy. No, that was the chair. That's the sound of the object. Jesus Christ. My boy, I, I see what you did there, and I see why you did it. I see what you did there, and I see why you did it. I have no quarrels with that. Um, She got some long-ass legs, bro. Let me, let me stop. We're going to clear this right up. Just because us women, when they are type preferencing a man, and we go along the lines of saying we want a man that don't play about us, a man that protects, a man that provides, and by all means will do everything that he needs to do to protect his woman, that does not mean we want a thug. Just because we don't want somebody that we could walk all over and we don't want nobody, we don't want no scary ass man, that don't mean we want somebody punching us upside our head or we want a thug. So just because I want somebody that's not scared or somebody that's don't play about me or will do anything for me, it don't mean that I want a thug. I don't want nobody punching up on me. I don't want nobody talking to me like crap. I don't want nobody mistreating me. I want somebody to have masculine energy that cares about me and don't play about me. Give me that sense of security. Let me know I have a man. Let me be proud to say that. Hmm. I understand what she's trying to say. She don't want to... If she wants somebody that'll stand up for her and himself in any given situation where there's disrespect present. I understand that. But I do understand also, and this from growing up, and I don't know how it is now because, you know, I'm married. I've been off these streets for a long time. But I do remember growing up, that all the bad boys used to get all the girls. It was because um, bad boys were exciting. They weren't boring. They, they wasn't coming in there with that Shakespeare and Romeo and Juliet bullshit. They were coming with a, a level of excitement that got the juices flowing. Now, some females went to the extreme and they wanted dudes that would actually put hands on them. Like, I know girls that were attracted to that'll put hands on them and they would do every and anything in their power to antagonize these dudes to put hands on them and i never understood that but now that i'm grown i understand that it might have something to do with some past childhood trauma i'm trying not to swear sorry um i'm trying to see it i'm trying to see it gotta small ways pretty face and a big why y'all doing this why are y'all doing this Uh-uh. If you've got the big bank, you don't need to go. I ain't, I wasn't expecting all of that. Um, 
Wow. I don't know if y'all could tell, but she, she got the wagon. This is why you should be careful when going to Greece. So this is one of the scariest things I've ever had happen to me while traveling. I was in Thessaloniki, Greece. So me and my buddy go out to a bar. We had a nice time. I went to the bathroom. As soon as I opened up the stall, a bunch of guys grabbed me and they took me off somewhere else. You need to pay us money. I'm not paying. Sucker punched me. My phone goes flying. Six guys got over top of me. They held me by the throat and they just started beating me. They hit me so hard. My vision went blurry. I definitely had a concussion. One guy's choking me. The other ones are punching me in the face. Some nice guy comes over and grabs one of the dudes by the arms and says, enough. As soon as he did this, I took off running as fast as I could. Found a little newsstand. I pushed everybody out of the way and I said, you have to help me. All of a sudden, two guys show up and they said, we can help you. We're with the police. They took me away from this whole crowd. And once we were by ourselves, grabbed me. They threw me in the back of a car. And that's when I realized that these are the same guys that have been beating me. I'm kidnapped. I checked the lock on the door. It pulls up. I jumped out and ran. I had no clue where I was at. I had no phone. Finally, I see my buddy Kyle. I got out of Greece. I was in Serbia within a few hours. They had my phone unlocked and they were using Apple Pay over and over again trying to pay themselves my throat still hurts from when they grab me wrists are really messed up my face is healed up the scratch is gone the black eye is almost gone so i'm lucky to be alive and happy to be back home make sure you're following for more and you let me know what i should do next um stay your ass home my brother that's what you should do next i can't believe he even asked us that i think that's my worst fear is to go to another country and get beat up or get kidnapped i don't know if i've seen too many movies or i've watched too many documentaries or i've seen too many things like this with stories similar to this of people going to these countries and getting kidnapped or going to these countries and getting arrested my boy was telling me a story he looks black but he's honduran i forgot what you call him but he like you know his culture is pretty much african but, but he speaks spanish so he was telling me a story how him and his brother were going to honduras and his brother bought weed through customs it got through it got through over here but when they got to honduras them dudes in honduras found it so he was saying how they had him kneel on the floor hands in their head and he's basically scared as hell he was scared shitless i'll be scared too because i done heard stories about honduras bro i done heard stories about these the cops out there the, the shoot the robbers out there long story short there was like yo y'all give us five hundred dollars and we'll let them go so he told his brother, his brother, oh, that's it? Shit, I, I got that right here. Boom. And he was just happy that them dudes was willing to accept money. Because he was like, bro, to be quite honest with you, I do not want to go to jail in Honduras, which I wouldn't. You know what I'm saying? You go to jail in Honduras, you might fuck around and disappear. This a whole life policy and you can keep it as long as you want and never have your rates increased. Now, last thing and very important, if any other agent calls you fishing for information, just let them know that you're now insured, okay? Alrighty. Now, some people in this industry are very unethical. Uh, they just want to sell you... Hold on. This is a common case. The voice don't match the body. He better be faking it, dog. But even if he faking it, why could he be faking it that good? Pause. A cheap plan that pays them the highest commissions, not genuinely helping. So remember, the customer service that you receive from your final expense company is just as important as the price is. Remember, I work with all the major carriers in your state, and a lot of things are changing with insurance. And um, out of everything you're approved for, this is by far the most affordable policy that will not lose value and not raise price. Now, I want to give you a confirmation number for your protection. Let me know when you're ready. Talk down my voice. What happened? <laughs> oh, really? You just pulled me? This is why I have trust issues when these people call me on the phone. So you're trying to tell me when I'm on the phone thinking I'm talking to white ass Todd, I might be talking to black ass Jamal. Today I'm going to be performing three of my feats of strength. First up is card carry. Now, as you can see, I'm just opening this brand new pack of Mavericks. I absolutely love Mavericks because they make that nice sound and they're very crisp whenever you tear them. Now, I usually... All right, so I know that a lot of y'all are going to prejudge, and we're not going to sit here and prejudge, okay? We're not. What I'm going to say is this mother...
strong as hell. I don't think y'all understand how hard it is to rip a full deck of cards. Don't stop at just tearing it in half. I go for the quarter. Now for my second feat of strength, nail bending. This is a six inch, 60 penny nail. It is quarter inch in diameter. It takes a little more than 300 pounds of pressure to bend in half. Now the leather wraps just protect my hands because eventually uh, things do go awry and well, you end up with a hole in you that's not supposed to be there. Now for the third and final part of this act, horseshoe bending. I'm going to turn this into a heart. And I'm going to back up a little bit so you can see everything in the show. So while I'm wrapping these up, I'm going to impart to you the most important lesson from the show. Wrap it up for safety. Wrap it up for safety. Now that I got that all wrapped up and ready to go, here we go. First bend in. I ain't gonna lie, a little bit of that sugar came out just now, but yo, that is a strong mother. Yeah, imagine trying to trying to throw some jokes. Um, mm, I don't know if to say her, her or his way, but uh, they, they imagine throwing some jokes their way. Right? I'm, I'm trying to be politically correct now. You getting f***ed up. Yeah. You getting washed. 